Hello friends, welcome back to the lecture series on high voltage engineering. We are discussing our next topic in this lecture that is layout of high voltage laboratory classification, earthing and shielding of high voltage. This particular topic consists of four topics on discussion. The first is layout. Second is classification. Third is earthing. And fourth is shielding related to the high voltage or high voltage laboratory. So let us start with the introduction. Basically, high voltage laboratories is or are an essential requirement for making acceptance test for the equipment that go into operation in the extra high voltage transmission system. The acceptance test, it means that the insulating material which we are going to accept for the power system or in the power system that insulating material to be tested so that the test called as acceptance test can be performed. So acceptance test means we have to accept this particular material after doing the test on it and that can be used in the transmission system called extra high voltage or ultra high voltage transmission system. In addition, ultra high voltage, it is also referred as UHV laboratories were also find, found essential to plan, design and ensure economical and reliable transmission systems. So it means these laboratories are also in a use so that those laboratories can uh, do the testing on the equipments related to ultra high voltage uh, or ultra high voltage means the equipments or insulating materials which are going to be used in ultra high voltage transmission system. So therefore those laboratories, laboratories to be planned, designed and it must be economical and reliable. So this is what for the ultra high voltage laboratories. Now, these can be used for different voltage levels. They also facilitate carrying out investigations on the lightning. Means the purpose of the laboratories is also to investigate the lightning and switching phenomenon. Basically, that phenomenon, it is related to the voltage and that voltage is referred as impulse voltage. Whenever we have a lightning and switching phenomenon, that particular phenomenon gives high voltage at high frequency and therefore it is referred as a impulse voltage and that behavior is to be tested means the behavior of the apparatus to be tested so that that can be used on the high voltage transmission system. So this basically operates means the laboratories not only test the extra high voltage but also the ultra high voltage for power frequency and high frequency insulating materials. Now there are different test facilities generally given. So the test facilities which are provided in high voltage laboratories and the test on which it is performed are named as like we have to conduct the test and it is to be performed on the transmission equipments. In transmission, generally the equipments which are preferred are transformer, then lightning arrester, isolator and circuit breaker, then insulators, cables, capacitors, then line hardware and accessories that includes say towers, tower footing resistance, etc. and other equipments. In other equipments 
like other than these seven listed equipments like reactors and all that comes under this particular category so the different tests which are carried out on above equipments which i have listed in previous slide are the power frequency withstand test that includes weight and dry impulse test dc withstand test switching surge test test under the polluted atmospheric conditions that is there is a pollution on the equipments and it is to be tested if it is polluted then the partial discharge and riv measurements and high current test so these special tests to be performed now in addition to the above facilities and the test the laboratory should also have the facilities for conducting research other than this testings like the test which are which we are going to uh, do on the equipments listed is nothing but the facility which is given in the laboratory so other than the testing facility there must be the research to be done in the laboratory and that facility is to be there in the labs so that research is to be done on dielectric properties of insulation insulating materials etc in an un, uh, ultra high voltage laboratories that should serve the long term requirements of uhv transmission system as well as immediate short term needs in the operation and strengthening of lower voltage transmission line which are presently in use or planned for the near future in its initial phase it can be used for testing of equipment rated from 400 kV or 525 kV the tests which are conducted like insulation strings transmission towers lines hardware transformers bushings disconnectors and metal clad switch gear for ac dc type testing so these are the equipments which are generally preferred on transmission line in the power system and these are the different voltage levels which reaches or at which on which the equipments are used so these are the voltage levels on which these equipments are used and it must be tested and there may be the need to withstand these equipments on high voltage for longer period so this is what the test facilities which are provided now there are different activities and studies which are done in the laboratories so in high voltage laboratories in addition to conduct test on equipment are used for research and development work on the equipment there is need to do the r and d on the equipment this includes determination of the safety factor for dielectrics and reliability studies under different atmospheric conditions such as rain fog industrial pollution etc because the equipments which are going to be installed on transmission line in the power system it is not required at all it will be used in the safer conditions there may be the chance of having rain there may be the chance of having fog it may be that it is near or in the industrial area where we find the industrial pollution so if it is so then these parameters or atmospheric conditions are going to affect on it as the voltage increases the requirement of conducting the test is also increase so under different atmospheric conditions at different voltage levels the equipments must be tested sometimes it is required to study problems associated with test lines and other equipment under under natural atmospheric or pollution conditions which cannot be done indoors and it must be referred outdoor only so generally the research activities which are generally included are listed here like 
the breakdown phenomenon is on the insulating uh, mediums like gas, liquid, solid, and the combination of the uh, insulating mediums. Then withstand voltage on long gaps. Then surface flashover studies on equipment. So there may be the chance of having flashover due to the change in voltage or higher voltage than the rated voltage of that particular insulating material. So that flashover studies must be done in the laboratory with the equipments which are going to be used. So with special reference to the equipment and materials used in the power system. Then electrical interference studies due to discharge from the equipment operating at high voltages. Then the studies on insulation coordination, like whether uh, insulations coordinates with each other on the different voltage levels, it must be studied because it is not required at all that only single insulating material is required. So if there are more insulating materials are used called as composite insulating materials, then there is need to have the coordination between the materials. And if it is used in the power system, then it must be tested. It must be studied. Then high current phenomenon, like if it experiences the high current, that is if the insulating materials or components instrument experiences the high current, then there is a chance of occurrence of arcs. That high current also experiences in plasma physics. So these kinds of research activities are generally done and therefore these parameters are to be tested or measured. The fields of research undertaken in an UHV lab are related to the design, development and testing needs of transmission lines having AC system voltage of 765 kilovolt and 11,000 kilovolt and also the needs of equipment testing at this facility. The following research areas can be identified. So these are the research areas on which it can be tested. The first effect of Corona and field on performance of transmission lines, then performance of air insulation under different voltage stress using very long gaps, then performance of line insulators under different weather conditions like temperature, humidity and varying pollution conditions. Then performance of conductor bundles which are subjected to AO line vibrations. So these are the research areas which are to be done on the equipments or insulating materials. So this is all about what the introduction, the test facilities, then activities which are done. Now, let us take the classification that is another topic in this lecture so that is classification this high voltage lab depending on the purpose for which they are intended and the resources that is finances available are classified into the first small laboratories medium size laboratories large general purpose laboratories and last be the ultra high voltage laboratory so let us start with the introduction to this small laboratories. What this says, this is our first classification. So a small laboratory is one that contains DC or power frequency test equipment. Power frequency means normal frequency. So the test equipments which are kept there, it is less than 10 kilowatt or 10 kV rating. And impulse equipment that is for a high voltage, high frequency equipment of energy rating of about 10 kilojoules or less. So this is what the requirement in case of small laboratories. The voltage ratings is 300 kilovolt for AC if there is a single unit. If it is cascaded unit, then it reaches from 500 to 600 kilovolt. So you can see there is increase in the voltage as it is cascaded. Then if there is a DC, then plus minus 200 to 400 kilovolt. If it is impulse, then it must it is less than 400 kilo 
volt. These are the voltage ratings generally preferred for these kinds of the supply. So these are the types of supply and these are the voltage levels which are used or voltage ratings which are used. Normally the equipment is meant for housing in a room or hall of size 15 meter by 10 meter by 8 meter. Sometimes the equipment ratings are limited such that they can be accommodated in a room having a height of 5 to 6 meter only. Here the height which we have mentioned is say 8 meter. Such laboratories are meant for engineering colleges and universities who decide to build such facility with small resources for doing high voltage tests or maybe research or for imparting training. So generally in colleges or in universities, the need is only say for the practical purpose, maybe for the R&D and maybe for the training purpose. Then these kinds of laboratories called small laboratories can be used. In such a case, it is preferable that the engineering college university that may associate, that is may collaborate with the local industry or R&D organizations. So there may be the chance of having the collaboration of a college or a university with some industry. Another idea is to have the university to decide to own the library fully, but throw open the facilities, open the facilities of a regular technical training and high voltage testing for the clients so that can be open to the industry persons for uh, utilizing it for as a training and high voltage testing purpose here it may be mentioned that many high voltage problems can be solved by test at moderate voltage levels such laboratories can be built with an investment of 2 to 10 million rupees yes definitely the cost matters here but these small laboratories can be built so that the kind of trainings can be given to the candidates to the students with some registration amount and the earning source can be generated second is medium size laboratories which are also called as industrial laboratories in case of medium size laboratories their main function will be for doing a routine test their main function is for routine test. The demand on future test and test resources will be known to the same extent as that of the future production targets. So based on the future targets, it can be, it can have the different taste. The careful planning of such laboratories should include like ground transport, handling equipment, rationalization of test procedures and providing a room for testing etc such laboratories may initially contain a power frequency testing facility power frequency means normal frequency testing facility as per indian standard that frequency must be 50 hertz so therefore 50 hertz is the power frequency testing facility at a voltage of 200 to 600 kilovolt for cables then transformers with KVA 100 to 1000 ratings. The impulse voltage generator required would have a rating of 20 to 100 kilojoules or even more. Other test equipments like the impulse current generator for testing some kinds of arresters and the DC test facilities for testing cables and capacitors can also be made available so it means these facilities can also be put in case of medium size laboratories that can be used specifically for the industrial laboratories so in industrial laboratories not much emphasis is generally given for undertaking research work and little flexibility may be available for incorporating new equipments generally whatever the product that particular industry is generating that is a result that result product must be tasted and therefore that 
we have the regular test and testing equipments so this industry doesn't give any any emphasis on the trainings or research it is only have the testing purpose and therefore they don't need the new equipments in the laboratories this is second let us start with the third called as large size laboratories so this type of laboratories are meant to carry out the testing and some research work and will contain almost all high voltage high current test equipments and facilities so therefore as this is basically used not only for testing as well as for research work so therefore it should have the test equipments and all other facilities the basic facilities which are available are one or more high voltage test halls corona and pollution test chambers because corona is audible and visible and therefore there must be a test chamber for visual effect of the corona then outdoor test area for test on large sized equipments transmission lines towers etc then controlled atmosphere trick test rooms or chambers then provision for overnight test like there may be the chance to keep the equipments for longer period and it may start in the morning may take the test overnight and therefore there must be a provision for overnight test and stay right so the operators may have to stay there during that testing so there therefore this provision must be there and it is generally available in large size laboratories then there must be the computer facilities conference halls library etc etc with good office facilities so it is expected to have this the size and rating of the test equipment will be quite large the building and equipment include the workshop material handling equipment like cranes ladders air cushion platforms etc so these things must be there in large size laboratories then the personnel connected with such laboratory will include a director or a manager maybe few group leaders a section head and that must be separate for research testing measurement electronics and computer facilities etc so this is what now in addition there will be a supporting staff comprising test engineers technicians library and office staff and skilled and semi skilled work may so hopefully you have clear with this large size laboratories now let us talk on uhv laboratories this is ultra high voltage laboratories and are intended for carrying out the tests which help in the basic design of experimental transmission lines like the uh, setup where we need to keep the ultra high voltage of voltage ratings 765 kilovolt and above so this is what the voltage rating for the ultra high voltage 765 kilovolt equal to or greater and for full scale outdoor testing of conductors and insulation structures so whatever the conductors and insulation structure are going to be put there on that particular transmission line for the transmission of the voltage equal to or greater than this value it must be tested now in addition there should be an indoor laboratory for doing basic research that may be the chance to have this also for basic research right then a uhv lab should therefore comprises of an outdoor experimental line for conducting corona and vibration studies an outdoor corona test cage that testing cage must be there then an erection bay a pollution test chamber indoor laboratories for basic research typically high voltage equipment must be there and the ratings of equipment may vary in different laboratories depending on the requirement okay so this is all about the classification of the laboratories now next part is layout of the high voltage laboratories so this the layout of an high voltage laboratory is an important aspect for providing an efficient testing facility that is what the layout 
layout means whatever they are in the laboratory it must be specifically present on the place where it is decided layout so that called that is called as layout in a layout if you are saying that particular transformer testing transformer to be placed on this particular position with all other uh, protective devices and protecting uh, material then it must be placed there and if it is there it must be shown in the layout that this particular device is placed here that is called as layout laboratory arrangements differ very much like definitely it is going to be very depends on the availability of all the resources which are required to have or to build that high voltage laboratory so therefore it varies it differs so it differs from a single equipment to the multi and the multi equipments are like dc ac impulse arrangement in different testing programs each laboratory must be designed individually it means individual uh, aspect must be there because there may be there may be the chance of having all the resources available uh, with that particular industry institute r and d lab uh, university and based on that availability it must be it must have its own layout okay but the specific features that can be considered considered like the type of equipment the available space as i said the other accessories which are required there the storage space required etc earthing control gear and safety precautions require most careful considerations okay so these points are very very important then the building construction is not critical except where ionization tests are conducted generally that particular construction is not critical but if there is need to have the ionization test then it is to be properly built now to minimize the floor loading problems that loading problems with this ground level can be decided so like to minimize the floor loading problems and to simplify earthing arrangement to simplify earthing arrangement a ground level location is preferred these labs must be placed on ground level it is not to be placed on say upper level maybe first floor second floor and so on it is to be there on the ground level the purpose is to reduce the floor loading problem because whenever we test uh, we do the testing on the different equipments or insulating materials it has that stress on the floor so therefore that loading problem floor loading problem to be avoided and to have the proper earthing arrangement it is to be uh, kept on the ground level now what is floor loading problem the floor should withstand the loading imposed by the equipment and the test object okay so this is what about the loading problem now the arrangements should be made to ensure that the laboratory is free from dust rot and the excessive humidity laboratory windows may require blackout arrangement for visual corona like there may be the need to have the black room so that the audible and visual corona that particular test can be done on the lines during visual corona if it is a day time then we need to keep that particular room sun free that is radiation free lights should be off and there should not be any solar radiation otherwise the visual effect of the corona cannot be seen properly so the room control room like whenever that we have the there is need to keep one control facility and if, if it is that control is there in the control room then it should be located in such a way as to include good overall view of the lab and test area so from control room you can easily be uh, uh, easily you can easily view the laboratory and the testing area the main access door to the test area must be accommodate the test equipment and the test object and have adequate interlocking arrangement like whenever you start testing it must be interlocked it must be interlocked so that no one can go inside during the testing of the equipment and we need to place some warning warning there uh, we may need to place some uh, 
lights there so that red lights are generally provided used and whenever the testing starts through control room the lights starts automatically or manually and when it starts that shows the testing has started in that particular testing area it is just like a, a operation theater which is generally available in the hospitals like when the operation starts the door get closed and the light red light generally starts so the same facility is expected it is expected in case of the high voltage laboratory and it must be located in the layout a typical layout of high voltage lab accommodating say 1 megavolt ac testing transformer and a 3 megavolt impulse generator is given in the respective diagram so we do have that particular uh, arrangement shown in the diagram so you can refer this here this is what the layout and the dotted circles indicate the clearances which are necessary clearances for various equipment are indicated by the chain circles in fact both the points are almost same so whatever the circles which are shown in a dotted line are important one so this is what the laboratory structure now what this laboratory structure consists of you can see here this is 1 2 and 3 this three points are indicating the cascade transformer set there may be two transformer there may be three transformer sets required depends on the transformer rating then four is dc charging unit five is the impulse current generator so you can see it is placed here this is the place for dc charging unit then the six is impulse voltage generator then seven be the sphere gap that is sphere gap that generally preferred to test the sphere that is with through with the help of sphere gap we have that testing called insulating material at say dc voltage ac voltage impulse voltage all the tests can be carried out with the help of sphere gap and the measurement can be done then we have dc test set then we have control room so this control room is placed in such a that the all the equipments are seen properly it is viewed properly so this 1 2 3 cascaded transformer set have 1 megavolt you can see this layout also so it has 1 megavolt of capacity dc charging unit is of 200 kilovolt then the current generator 200 kilo ampere can be generated voltage generator 3 mega volt as this is impulse voltage okay then sphere gap 2 meters of diameter the spheres which are is used there is of 2 meters of diameter the dc test is having a testing equipment of 300 kilo volt and the control room which is mentioned there is of 5 to 5 into 3.5 into 3 meter cube so this is what the typical layout of a high voltage lab this is specifically for 1 megavolt cascade transformer and 3 megavolt impulse generator so hopefully you understood this concept again i am repeating here the dotted circles indicating the clearances necessary clearances for various equipments are indicated by the chain circles okay so this is what about layout now another point which i have mentioned here that is the layout of ultra high voltage lab this ultra high voltage lab that can be placed indoor or outdoor depends on the requirement so an indoor laboratory is preferred when most of the equipment testing and associated research work so again testing and research work is carried out indoors whereas outdoor labs are preferred when the electrical and mechanical parameters of say ultra high voltage transmission lines are to be experimentally determined so that the design of future lines can be based on this particular data then a facility was needed in india to generate test data of breakdown voltage and air clearances which would be necessary to design a future transmission line so like whenever we need to keep uh, uh, we have to study the future transmission line voltage with the help of 
with the help of this UHV laboratory, it can be done. Therefore, an outdoor UHV lab was conceived, designed, and built. That is to meet its future requirement. Okay. Then high voltage test facilities and large size high voltage laboratories are available at only few places in the country and even abroad as each of them cost several millions of dollars the costing of these kinds of laboratories is huge yes definitely the earning is of the same kind but the investment is very heavy and therefore only few of the labs ultra high voltage labs are available in india as well as abroad the cost may vary from say 10 dollar 10 to 50 million right okay so this is all about the layouts of high voltage and ultra high voltage now let us discuss this particular point that is called as the grounding or earth now what we have so an earth or ground system means an established stable reference potential normally taken to be zero that is generally we consider the ground potential ground potential or earth potential to be zero there are three types of grounds called ideal ground that is the best one then single point ground moderate and burst ground that is satisfactory so these are the results from these kinds of grounding if we prefer if we use now ideal ground this ideal ground of all like is the best one which cannot be realized in practice now the next preferred ground is the single point ground and the burst ground is the least satisfactory ideal ground can be approximated by an equipotential potential plane realized by a finite conducting material the lab is covered by a sheet of copper meter welded into a single unit but this is very costly and is used rarely a single point ground is commonly used in this an earthing grid is installed so let us start considering this let us say we have point this point is e e is referred as a single point earth position then there are different equipments required and it is to be connected to this point e let us say here we have one indicated with a box and it is connected to this earth point let us say this point one is impulse voltage generator then point two is the sphere gap and therefore it is indicated with a circle that this is your sphere gap then there is point three again it is connected to this common point single point as a position of the test object for impulse testing then point number four somewhere here we have point number four but again that point number four is also again connected with this then point number five so point number four is the impulse current generator and point number five is position of test object for impulse current generator so as we are going to test on this point number four application this is the source and this is what the application so point four and five is connected through the dotted line again it is representing the grounding then let us say here we have a point number six this point number six is a control room and this basically controls and but again connected to the earthing point for the protection purpose then there may be the charging rectifier say it is kept here it is kept here so this is what the arrangement generally done and this kind of arrangement is called as a single point single point grounding system why this is called a single point grounding system because a single point is preferred that is e and that is called a single point or position then we can have a bus grounding system so let us talk about this single point grounding system which is shown in this diagram this can be installed within the laboratory floor the connection from the grid is given by a large sized copper conductor means from grid that power supply wala grid it must be connected 
to large size copper conductor to a point identifies as a common ground point so this is what the common ground point the ground connections of various equipments and other components of the high voltage test circuit are made to the common ground point high voltage impulses give rise to high currents of several kilo amperes and the rate at which the currents may change that ranges from 10 to the power 7 to the 10 to the power 9 ampere per second so whenever we do have the impulse test maybe current voltage of high frequency maybe the high voltage test etc all those equipments to be connected with this if proper care is not taken then there may be the chance of having a flash work or maybe a damage damage to the equipment maybe risk to the control or the life of a person even so in order to avoid these difficulties a copper strips copper strips instead of using conductor round conductor the copper strips are provided or it is used secondly a metal grid embedded in a concrete floor that gives rise to less resistance and inductance in the ground circuit the ground is effectively used only when the large size strips are used with close spacing the ground system should ensure the conditions so this is all about this grounding or earthing system now what else that particular grounding or earthing system should have so this must be good earthing system should have a copper network with a mesh of one meter width that must be laid down below the ground level that must be laid down below the ground level around the impulse test area and it must be well connected this network is extended over the entire area as i already shown in the diagram it must be extended over entire area comprising all equipment such as testing transformer charging high voltage rectifier safe test bay etc to be connected okay now the grid should be electrically connected that grid must be electrically connected and it is to be connected to all the metallic frames whatever the metallic frames which may have a leakage of current so it must be connected and reinforce the iron in the concrete walls and pillars of the building at their bottom points impulse test area impulse test area must be provided with a spread stretched or expanded copper grid on the floor and it should have a thickness of about 2 mm ground rods driven into the earth to a depth equal to the height of the impulse generator the rods are welded to the inside a copper grid as well as surface copper grid earth connection facility is to be provided for every 16 square meter area so that the shortest lead can be used from any position inside the laboratory so whenever if the a requirement to have or to extend some equipment then that copper strip must be available so that it can be extended and it can be connected now earthing is provided to protect the equipment from lightning strokes and to protect the equipment from short circuits that's why that earthing is provided if it is not earth that may rise the potential that voltage may increase that is different at different points and there may be the chance of having different potential different voltages for different points in the laboratory thus causing unnecessary danger and that may be to the human life and even damage to the equipment so hope you understood this particular earthy this is what the third point and last point is the shielding in high voltage so what the shielding says a high voltage lab small medium or large in size should have some type of screening against electrostatic and electromagnetic field interference electrostatic means the static charges which are developed due to the application of high voltage power frequency high voltage high frequency and electromagnetic due to the flow of high current maybe due to fault short circuit overloading 
etc during testing etc so this electrostatic and electromagnetic field which are developed due to these voltage and current the screening is essential if partial discharge measurements are to be made in the laboratory as attenuation is less than 40 decibels is needed for electrical signals in the frequency range of 1 megahertz say for electromagnetic signals in larger test laboratories attenuation levels due to interferences are higher and arise mostly due to the imperfect screening if the screening is not done properly if the shielding is not done properly then there may be the chance of having this imperfect uh, imperfect or the higher and uh, like the there may be the chance of having attenuation problems so to check that attenuation uh, to sorry to check that screening to check that screening one operator can to tune a portable pocket radio and walk around the laboratory tuning the radio to different frequencies say from 500 kilohertz to 10 megahertz okay so you have to carry one pocket transistor called radio tune that transistor with different frequencies from 500 kilohertz to 10 megahertz the signal should not be heard that signal should not be heard like if there is a signal if there is nothing there then there will not be any signal so signal should not be heard however it is often found that the signal level increases significantly when a cable or an electrical outlet is crossed so when you cross some cable maybe electrical outlet you immediately heard one sound that is called as signal if it is possible the same check may be carried out with automatic volume control gain control disconnected the sources of disturbance inside the laboratories are the switching transients due to switching on or switching off of loads like lift cranes transformers etc then rectifier circuits shielded cable acting as antennas for outside signals okay so the best screening is obtained if the roof is the top of the room roof the walls and the flooring area are screened shielded with an expanded metal wire so if you place the metal wire the mesh like if i use this this kind of metal wires can be placed on all on each wall on the roof even on the floor and joined together okay further all electric conductors are fully screened in metal conduits which are run below the floor metal network so whenever we have the conduits conduits means conductors it must be uh, uh, insulated it must be insulated okay so this is all about this particular topic yes this is the bigger topic but this particular topic covers almost all the contents related to the high voltage laboratory so in this particular case we have started with the layout of high voltage lab then the classification then the earthing and shielding of the high voltage lab so that's all with this concept hopefully you understood this lecture thank you very much take care